Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how I made this chevron, um, chevron patterned watercolor print and I am planning on framing this and hanging it up in our house so I really like how it turned out. Anyways, if you're interested in how I created this, just keep watching. This is what I'm going to be starting with and this is a piece of 11 by 15 paper. Um, watercolor paper. This is from Canson. It's actually pretty thin, but um, I plan on framing this so I'm not too worried about the thickness of the paper. Um, the next thing you'll need is either some, this is the post-it label roll paper, but either some sort of thin, um, not super sticky tape like this. Um, painter's tape also works. Just make sure that you kind of stick it on your hand before you put it down because sometimes the pa painter's tape will rip the paper a little bit. And then the paints that I'm going to be using are from Michaels. So I just have a bunch of different colors. These are watercolor paints and I typically squeeze the paints into a palette like this. And then um, as far as brushes go, I, I use this brush a lot um, just to kind of like drop bits of paint here and there. Um, and these two you can find at Michaels as well. And then the last thing you're going to need is a ruler, which I forgot to grab. I like to use this metal ruler, and this I'll just use to make sure my uh, chevron, our, the chevron pattern is spaced out evenly. Um, so to get started, you're first going to tape off your pattern, and I do know that I'm going to frame this probably in an 11 by 14 frame, because... Um, that way I can buy a pre-made frame and I won't have to get a custom frame. So this is a little bit longer, um, but I do want to have some white space on the edge, so I kind of just eyeballed this. This is probably about a quarter of an inch, a little more than a quarter of an inch. Um, you can leave off any space you want, but do keep in mind that the color will start on this edge of the tape. So this one I just eyeballed. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, as well as the top and bottom of the page. Okay, so I have my pencil, and now what I'm going to do is measure the space between um, these two pieces of tape here, and I have about eight and a quarter inches. And I'm not going to be super precise, um, just because I don't feel the need to, but, you know, that's up to you. So what you're going to do is you can either do this on your head or if you have a calculator. Um, so I'm going to leave about three quarters of an inch between each column. So I'm going to have two blank three quarters of an inch columns here. So what I'm going to do is do eight and a quarter minus two times the three quarters of an inch. So that's one and a half. And once I have that number, um, what I'm going to do is divide it by, and this will be different for, you know, whatever size painting you choose, but um, I'm going to divide that by three. I get two and a quarter. So each of my columns is going to be two and a quarter inches wide. So I'm just going to go up to the top here and mark very lightly with your pencil because um, you want to be able to erase it. So I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to mark two and a quarter and then plus three quarters. So that's for the first column. And then I'm going to go again, two and a quarter plus three quarters. That's the second column. I'm going to do the same exact thing at the bottom. So there I have my um, columns and what I'm going to do now is lightly draw the columns down my page. So there are my three columns that I'm going to be painting the chevron pattern in. Now the next step is you want to mark, and I could have done this before too, but um, you want to mark the middle of each column of chevron because you want the points of the chevron to be in the middle. Um, you don't, I mean you can make them kind of wonky if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and mark the middle.
this is optional so if you wanted to you can tape off um, the lines here which I think I might do I haven't decided yet and then you could also tape off in between the chevrons so that you really have a clean crisp line and again with like the washi tape you want to make sure that you stick it on something like your hand or something else first Now that I'm thinking about it, I want a little bit more white space to be showing through. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab my washi. But what you want to do ideally is line up the tip, the corner of um, your washi strip like that. Line it up with the middle line. My colors today I'm going to use mostly blues and greens because that's what we have a lot of around our house and you want to go ahead and like and have your colors mixed um, before you sorry I'm getting distracted before you put down um, your water on the paper because you want to be able to drop the colors down on top of that water really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I think what I want to do is with each row, I think I'm going to start with blue at the top on these two and green at the bottom on these two. So it'll fade from the blue to the green. And then I think what I'm going to do to get a little texture is just take my paper towel and crumple it up a little bit and then just kind of blot. So I forgot to erase my lines on that one, but I'm going to go ahead and do it on these other two before I get started. So now that I have everything painted in, um, this is when I usually go through and just kind of touch things up. Like if I want a little bit of a darker blue, maybe up here, I'll go ahead and put in a little bit more blue. Alright, so that looks pretty good. I'm really, I can't believe I forgot to erase these lines, but I'm going to go ahead and start peeling up my paint, or peeling up my tape. Okay, so now that all my tape is ripped up, I'm going to try and clean up some of these pencil lines. Alright guys, so that is pretty much it. Um, I did have to go back and add a little bit more paint and do a little bit more blotting to these just because um, the line that I forgot to erase still showed up a little bit. but. Um, it, it's fine. I mean, it looks a little bit different, but I don't think you'll be able to tell once it's framed and on the wall. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to erase your pencil lines before you paint over them, but um, I am going to let this dry for a little while and then I'm just going to flatten it and stick it in a frame. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you like this video or if you would like to see more like this. Um, and if you have any comments, questions, requests, please leave them down below. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.